What is up, everybody? Welcome to Music Theory with Spreadsheets. Now, if you're a musician and you are not that familiar with spreadsheets, don't panic. You don't have to do anything with spreadsheets or know about spreadsheets for this to be useful to you. I'll handle all the spreadsheet stuff. So let's just dive right in. This is a piano that I've drawn using magic spreadsheet stuff. <clears throat> and um, we're going to just quickly, if I know you, most of you probably already know the musical alphabet, but I'm just going to go ahead and write it out here. So when you're looking at a piano, here's how you identify the letter A. The letter A is first you identify a group of three black notes. Notice how there's three here, there's two here, there's three here. Let's look at this one. So you look at this group of three black notes, you take the rightmost one, and then this note is A. So there's my A. Now, if you just look at all the white keys and you go A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. <clears throat> now that's the musical alphabet. And of course, this is a repeating pattern, so I could just copy this and paste it here. And of course I could paste it here. And it goes in this direction and this direction. It kind of, you can imagine a piano that extends infinitely in either direction, it can go on forever. A normal piano has 88 keys and it stops uh, actually, the normal piano does begin on the letter A, and it goes all the way up to um, a letter C, all the way over to the right. All right, we have now labeled A through G, but we forgot about the black notes. So let's talk about the black notes. When you are looking at an A, and you go to the black note up and to the right, that is going to be called A sharp. Okay, a sharp just means I take whatever note I'm on and I go up one to the right. And so you might ask yourself the question, is there another word that means go down and to the left? And of course there is, and so this would be A flat. <clears throat> so we have A here and then down to the left is A flat, that's this black note. And then we have A sharp, which is this black note. But then you might say to yourself, well, wait a minute, this is B, and so isn't this the same thing as B flat? Because it's one and down to the left of B, and so you would be correct. And so this is actually both A sharp and B flat. They're the same exact note, A sharp and B flat, just two different names for it. Now you might ask, ask yourself the question, what about C? Isn't C one note up and to the right of B? And so isn't C the same thing as B sharp? and you would actually be exactly correct and um, that is just annoying and so we're not even going to deal with that. We're going to call the white notes by their actual letter names and we're going to call the black notes by their um, sharps and flat names. So that's that. Let's label the rest of the black notes. So here's C sharp and of course it's also one and down to the left of D so that would be D flat. Now this black note here is one and up and to the right of D and so we're going to call it D-sharp, but of course it's also one and down to the left of E. And so that's E-flat. And of course this is one and up and to the right of F, and so this is going to be F-sharp. And it's also one and down to the left of G, and so it would be G-flat. So here we have our complete musical alphabet. And, oh wait, uh, let's just go ahead and grab this guy too. So g sharp and A flat. So how many unique letters or notes do we have? We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 before it begins the repeating pattern again starting on A. So if I did this, copy, paste, copy, paste, you could imagine the entire piano is laid out exactly like that. Now, I'm going to say something kind of radical, which is that music theory is actually very easy. Now, the reason that's a radical statement is because most musicians think that music theory is very hard, and maybe you're one of them. Maybe you've heard in your life as a musician, or as a singer, or a piano player, or whatever, that music theory would be good for you, that it would help you to understand what you're playing, it would help you 
visualize the keyboard better, it would help you be able to communicate with more musicians better, it would help you understand what what do you mean when when you say I'm in the key of A. There's so many benefits to understanding music theory from a songwriting perspective, from a playing perspective, from a communication with other musicians perspective. But you kind of just like <laughs> haven't yet dealt with it in your life as a musician. Like it's just like one of those things that just seems just kind of a little just too annoying to deal with. And so you just haven't done it. And I'm going to say, I, I think I had this really, you know, an interesting insight as to why that is. So music theory deals with the distance between notes. That's kind of all it is, like the, the theory of music, at least as it pertains to notes, is understanding the distances between notes and why combining different notes with different distances between them makes weird, different kinds of sounds. Now, let's just have a basic definition really quick. A half step is when you take, when you start on one note and you go to the note directly adjacent to it. So from E to F, that would be one half step. Or another example, from F to F sharp, that would be another half step. <clears throat> what about two half steps? If I take two half steps from E, then I'm going to land on F sharp. But if I take two half steps from F, then I'm going to land on G. And the reason that's annoying is because you're going from a white note to a black note in two half steps or a white note to a white note in two half steps. Or if I started on F sharp and I went two half steps, I would land on G sharp, which is a black note. Now it's also possible to start on this black note and go two half steps and land on a white note. And so because the piano is not flat, distances are just hard to visualize. And so like you've got two layers, you've got the white notes and you've got the black notes. And so I thought to myself, this is kind of the reason why music theory is so hard. In fact, like, what if you could teach music theory in a way that just flattened out the piano and that would make everything way, way easier? And then it just hit me, like, spreadsheets will do this for you. If, so here's the deal. This course is a class in music theory that's going to blow your freaking mind because it's going to flatten out the piano and it's going to show you that music theory is actually very, very easy. And here's the first thing we're going to do. Um, to prove it to you, I'm going to flatten out this piano and then that's going to be the basis of the rest of this course. So bear with me. Let's do it together. I'm going to create a new sheet. <clears throat> and I'm going to call um, this the note A. And I just, just because I know exactly how the piano is laid out, I'm going to do this really quick. So this is A sharp slash B flat, this is C, sorry, pardon me, that's B, C, C sharp, D flat, D, D sharp, E flat, E, E, sh nope, F, F sharp, G flat, G, G sharp, A flat, and then that should be 12, is that right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, nailed it. All right. <clears throat> now I'm going to take all the um, black notes on the piano and I'm making black here. So that's a black note, that's a black note, that's a black note, that's a black note, that's a black note. And I'm going to take this pattern and I'm going to repeat it. And I'm going to repeat it again over here. And now, just because, I'm going to make it a little bit prettier. by adding some borders. And so, yep, uh, that. <clears throat> All right, so this is the note A, this is the note A sharp or B flat, this is B, C, C sharp slash D flat, D, D sharp slash E flat, E, F, F sharp slash G flat, G, G sharp slash A flat, and of course back to A. So just stare at this for a minute and notice that this is truly, really truly a piano. In fact, if I just go back to this sheet over here, it's almost like all I did was I just chopped this off. If I looked at just this row of keys, that's 
all I did. And so now we're going to understand music theory from this perspective, and you're going to see in just the next couple of videos why that's so powerful.